Hi guys, Dane here, and welcome to an episode of Archive Top 5. So, basically, this came about because I read a lot of books, and I've been filming rev uh, reviews faster than I can post them, so I have a whole collection of, like, archive unpublished reviews. And I was thinking about doing something called Reader, which would be a review every day in April, but basically I thought a better solution is actually to bundle reviews together into a single video because I know not everyone reads reviews and some bastard keeps disliking them as well. I will find you. This is one way to make sure that that footage just doesn't go to waste and there are some amazing books that I want to talk about. There are also some that can kind of go together into lumps. So for example at the moment I have four Bukowski reviews and it's like I could do one, read one more Bukowski book and then I have five Bukowski reviews. So that's part of the reason behind it. I'm also rethinking the way that I do reviews as well. So historically they've been pretty long, like 15 minutes maybe. I'm still going to do that for some books, like I've got The Handmaid's Tale down there for example and I really enjoyed that and so I want to do a big in-depth review. But as a general rule I'm going to be trying to shoot between 5 and 10 minutes per book so that these Archive 5 videos aren't super long. That said, the first few of them could be quite long. I know there's a Stephen King one coming up that's 45 minutes just for one book, so <laughs> yeah. One other thing I'll mention as well is that we're just going to run the videos back to back, so the intro and outro will still be there, which might be a little bit weird, but we'll be fine because it's the archive. And if you guys like this and you want me to do it with tags, I can probably do it with tags as well. Anyway, so the five books that we are going to be taking a look at today. These are all poetry collections. First up we have The Valley Press Anthology of Yorkshire Poetry, edited by Miles Salter and Oz Hardwick. Then we have Ten Poems of Kindness, selected and introduced by Jackie Kay. Then we have The Poetry Pharmacy, a tried and true prescriptions for the heart, mind and soul by William Seagart. We have 100 Prized Poems, 25 Years of the Forward Books, and this is edited by William Seagart. And then we have The Truth About Snails by J.D. Dehart, and J.D. Dehart is an indie poet. So yeah, I'm going to leave you in the more than capable hands of past Dane, and enjoy these Archive 5 reviews. Hi guys, Dane here, and today I'm going to take a look at three poetry books. Let's get started. The first thing to know is that these come from different sources, but all three of these have been sent to me. However... I'm not filming this just because they've been sent to me. I'm, I'm filming this actually, you know, I guess in a way I am. I'm filming this because I've read three poetry books very closely together and actually all three of them are interesting books in their own right. So I wanted to share them with you guys. One other thing to mention is that I'm gonna read a few poems from each of these books as well to try and give you more of a flavor for what they're like. Hopefully I do them justice. I'm going to start with The Truth About Snails by J.D. DeHart. So J.D. DeHart is a fellow indie author. I actually came across his work because he read and reviewed a few of my books. And he, he offered to send me his uh, poetry collection. So I kind of said, yeah, okay, I'll, 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 uh, I'll read it. But not promising anything because I've been sent a lot of really bad poetry. No offense to the people who've sent me poetry that aren't these. <laughs> Because these ones are good. I like these. That's why I'm recommending them. So, so J.D. DeHart sent me his poetry book. Like I said, it's called The Truth About Snails. And what I really like about his work is that it's kind of very modern, but with almost a classical feel, kind of in terms of its form. And it's um, the, the, the sort of the sentence structure of the poetry is very evocative, but also it's kind of complex, but simple at the same time. It's very hard to explain what I mean. So, Mr. DeHart was kind enough to sign it for me as well. So as you can kind of see here, most of the poems in this collection, they're not super long. Let's have a look at this one. I like this one. So, I'm going to read some of these. Well, this one's about um, graffiti and chalked messages on, on the pavement. It's called Sidewalk Chalk. When turning the corner, the first image strikes. A message in pastel colours, the bovine hieroglyphic ready for sacrifice. This is the place where the temple was. A short poem about going to the restroom is scratched on the pavement a few more feet away. And somebody loves somebody. For a moment, I think about the possibility of rain sweeping in, washing the whole page into a gutter, the animals running from a flood, no ark to give them safe passage to the future. A lot of the reason why I like this one is that it's kind of quite relevant to modern day, I guess, as well. This, this one's called Cupid Sighting. 
Careful, he's over there. Fat little baby man, belly and white t-shirt hanging over yellow stains, the strip of a belt, a necktie slapped down. He has been arrested in five states for ogling and indecent exposure. His name appears in the jail dockets with a little heart next to it in bright red. Let's erase that heart, the officials suggest. It won't go away, and he is Cupid after all. With little interest, he draws back his bow, letting Insouciant arrows find incorrect targets, which explains the guy you used to date. Small misguided projectiles roving through streets, high school hallways, while he puffs a cigarette, trying to quit, and thumbs through a tattered romance novel he found for a nickel at one of those old-timey, dust-smelling bookshops full of ephemera and awkward people. There's a very much like a mixture between the classic approach to poetry and like the form and the structure and the rhyming couplets and all of this stuff and what we see today. As I'm sure you want to know the truth about snails, here is the title poem. At one time it was the king of the sea, undulating with flow and fringe, clean cousin to the slug, walking on earth sometimes with tall stilt-like legs, the statuesque gams of a corn-raised debutante. Then came the cursing after the blessing, product of sin or other bad choices, poisoned apple, whatever, and down to the floor of creation went the poor mollusk, hiding its mucus, form in a shell, prodding the air and sensing heaven with nothing but a quivering stalk eye. There's its quivering stalk eye. Okay, so these two books, I won these in a Twitter competition from National Poetry Day here in the UK. And um, they sent me a big collection. It's actually in my October book haul. I'll link that below. I'll also link to where you can buy these. Um, and they sent me like 15 poetry books. And I've read these two recently that really stood out. So the first is 10 Poems of Kindness by Jackie Kay. I actually know someone called Jackie Kay, but it's not this Jackie Kay. This Jackie Kay, I can't remember what the word for it is, but she's the Scottish equivalent of a poet laureate. First off, Let's consider this is 10 poems, and in here we've got Jackie Kay, we've got uh, Sylvia Plath is in here, Kate Tempest is in here as well. For three out of 10, I'm interested straight away. Lots of other great poets as well. But this is all part of a wider thing, and the reason it's 10 poems of kindness is something called Felix's Campaign of Kindness, and it was uh, it's a, camp a charity campaign that's created by the mother of a, uh, a young lad called Felix Armstrong who committed suicide at 17 because he was being bullied and it, I mean I'm sure a lot of people watching this and writers and readers in general I think we're all quite highly attuned to mental health issues it's, it's very much written in Felix's memory but also it's to it's more than that it's trying to make or to try to show people why you should care about your fellow man so a lot of the Contemporary poets that contribute to this have written things specifically for this. Felix's mother has also written an open letter as well. It's all very, very touching and quite, quite important just in terms of what they're saying. I mean, it's nothing revolutionary. It's be nice to people. You know, it's 10 poems of kindness. We live in a world where we don't need a reminder to be kind, but at the same time, we very much need a reminder to be kind. And this is a great way of doing it. And this book itself actually comes with an envelope. And the idea is you buy this as almost like a poetry chat book instead of a greetings card or a birthday card or something like that. And from what I understand, any profits, of course, go to charity. But really, I mean, you look at it, it's, this isn't an amazing high quality put together book. This is someone in a back room somewhere has stapled this together it's a poetry chat book effectively and I love it I think it's great and I like the idea of it coming with the envelope so that you can send it to people so it's in memory of Felix Alexander 1998 to 2016 I think the first and the last poems in this collection which are both by Jackie Kay really sum up the book as a whole so the first is called Kinder Choose to be kind, friends, choose to be kind. Not duplicitous, not two-faced, not passive-aggressive, not dishonest, not spiteful, not cowardly, anonymous. Have good grace, bring out the best, don't stress. When faced with a choice, choose kindness. Choose to be kind, friends, choose to be kind. Being kind is generous, offers dividends. The opposite of kindness leaves a bad taste. Regret is sour, wolf's the years is a waste. Things you wish you'd not done or said, madness. When faced with a choice, friends, choose kindness. 
Choose to be kind, friends. Choose to be kind. Not violent, not bullying, not out for revenge. Don't nurse a grievance or gang up with mates. You wish to impress or lie about your motives for causing such total distress. When faced with a choice, chums, choose kindness. Choose to be kind, pals. Choose to be kind. Don't exclude. Don't send people to Coventry. Think for an extra second. Step back. Step away. Or surprise yourself by doing something truly lovely. Be benevolent. Be trusty. Be friendly. Be sound. When faced with a choice, pals, please be kind. Choose to be kind, friends. Choose to be kind. Wherever you are, on or offline, see what you find. In the street, in your classroom, kindness glows and it shines. At home or away, winter, spring, night or day. Today you know for sure you won't need a reminder. When faced with a choice, it's kind of better to be kinder. There we go. That phrase, don't send people to Coventry, means to ostracise somebody. I learned that the other day. And Coventry is a place here in the UK for our American friends. And this last one, this is the Valley Press Anthology of Yorkshire Poetry. And this is edited by a guy called Miles Salter, who puts on York Literature Festival. And actually, I had the pleasure of going to that uh, a couple of years or so ago. I was supposed to interview Miles Salter, actually, and it never transpired because we are just kind of both crazy busy. But this is all about poems about Yorkshire. But don't let put that put you off if you are American. I do think it will probably make more sense if you are British and you're vaguely familiar with Yorkshire culture, but I also think if you're American and you read this, you'll see that there's a lot more to Britain than just the, uh, the stuff you see on TV, basically, because no one sees Yorkshire men on TV. There are so many good things in this, because this is such a northern Yorkshire book as well. Haiku found in Barnsley by Matt Black. Walkabout bar seeks part-time weekend bar staff. No Muppets or Princesses. Delightfully Yorkshire. <laughs> and th there are some stories behind some of them as well. So this is by Patrick Lodge. And it's called Mary Bateman's Lament. And I'm not going to read you the poem. But the story behind it's included. So Mary Bateman, the so-called Yorkshire witch who lived in Leeds, was hung in 1809 for murdering Rebecca Perego by poisoning. She had led a life of petty theft and contracts, one of which was a hoax involving a hen predicting the end of the world by relaying eggs on which Bateman had written prophecies which the credulous paid a penny to see. Her body was publicly, publicly anatomised in Leeds and strips of her skin were sold to the audience as charms. Her skeleton was recent, only recently removed from display. Praise poem for Yorkshire puddings is one. I like this one actually. This one... I assume this is written by Janet Dean and I assume she was around in the 60s because it's about Brian Jones. It's called Brian Jones. I remember the day, a school trip to Lincoln, the rippled whisper they'd found him dead. It made me sad to think of him floating face down. But when I met him in Barnsley Market a week or two later, he was cheerful, smiling, in a way you wouldn't imagine from the stony concentration of holding his guitar neck. But there he was, on the cheese stall, in his khaki overall, his name embroidered as proof, his long slim fingers spread across the marble slab, his hand pulling tight and slow on the cheese wire, teasing the cheddar into see-through slivers with the skill of a true musician. So I've, I've just really been enjoying how specifically Yorkshire this book is. Vision from a moving car. Near Friday Thorpe service station on the A166, young woman bent by the roadside over a pram, ground length hair on fire, sunset flaring through it, husband or boyfriend gazing away smoking. So I really like this one as well, this is three po- normally I hate poetry books and this is three poetry books in a row that I've really enjoyed and um, all of them are kind of obscure indie-ish releases, they're not, you know, they're not. Dylan Thomas or something like that. These are people alive now, struggling to make money from poetry, which is almost impossible. Read all three of these, these are all good. I'll leave the um, dis the links to the books on Amazon below. Okay, well I didn't expect to actually be filming this, but um, I thought, why not? I've read another poetry book and I still haven't edited this video together, so I thought I'd shoot this as well and um, and, and talk about a fourth book in this, in this little set. This is another one of the poetry books that I was sent for winning the National Poetry Day competition. And this is 100 Prized Poems, 25 Years of the Forward Books. And this is edited by William Seacart. Basically, forward books have an annual poetry competition. So they'll have, you know, collection of the year and poem of the year and all stuff like that. 
And this has been going on for 25 odd years. At the end of each competition, they usually publish a book that collects the best submissions of that year. And this is basically the best of the best over that 25 years. And what's cool is that there are some real big names here. I mean, there's Carol Ann Duffy, um, Kate Tempest, Ted Hughes was in it, for example. So because it's been over this 25 period, the first one being in 1992, there's been a lot of chance for all sorts of different poets to kind of take part in it. What I really liked about this actually as well, it's very aesthetically pleasing, like as a book, it's just a really nice poetry collection. The paper's good quality, the covers, I mean the cover's not amazing, but it's it's good for a poetry book, I would say it's pretty good, especially because I'm used to seeing a lot of indie, um, indie poetry collections that are kind of badly designed and badly put together. But this is the real deal and it's uh, supported using public funding by Arts Council England as well. And um, there's really a lot, a lot here for you to enjoy, you know. Each poem, each poet also has their biography included and I actually found reading through those biographies at the end to be quite interesting. Now what's cool about this is that there are 100 poems in the collection, they're all different styles, um, some are rhyming, some aren't, the topics are all very different as well and obviously because it spans 25 years as well, they're also kind of different snapshots in time, you can almost feel the different ages I suppose between some of the poems. Now I want to read a few of them, I'm going to flick through at random and read a couple of them. So this is On a Bird Dead in the Road by George Barker and this was from the Ford Book of Poetry in 1993. What formerly flounced and flew its fantastic feathers now lies like a flattened old leather glove in the road and the gigantic wheels of the articulated juggernaut lorries pound down on it all day long like the mad will of God. Carol Ann Duffy's one, so Carol Ann Duffy is obviously a very well known poet. This is from the Forward Book of Poetry 1994 and it's called Valentine. Not a red rose or a satin heart, I give you an onion. It is a moon wrapped in brown paper. It promises light like the careful undressing of love. Here, it will blind you with tears like a lover. It will make your reflection a wobbling photo of grief. I am trying to be truthful, not a cute card or a kissogram. I give you an onion. Its fierce kiss will stay on your lips, possessive and faithful as we are, for as long as we are. Take it. Its platinum loops shrink to a wedding ring, if you like. Lethal. Its scent will cling to your fingers, cling to your knife. I kind of expected to whiz through this a lot quicker than I did, but I still did very much enjoy it. Um, I think it's maybe one that might be best enjoyed if you have this at the same time as you've got another book on the go, and then maybe each evening you dip in and read four or five poems and ten pages or so or something. Um, but I did very much enjoy it and I was impressed by it. It's kind of rare that I pick up a poetry book these days and I just enjoy it from start, start to finish. And um, that was certainly the case with this one. And so because of that, I'm giving it a strong four out of five stars. Well, one thing I have said with this one as well, if you're new to poetry, this is probably a pretty good collection to start with because again, it's got such a wide variety of different poets and different styles that you're pretty much guaranteed to find something in here for you to enjoy. So thanks a lot for watching. Let me know with a comment if any of these take your fancy. If not, what the last poetry book you read was, even if it was a uh, William Wordsworth book in high school or something like that. I want to know. Let me know the last poetry book you read and I will see you soon. Hi guys, Dane here and today I'm going to do a quick review of The Poetry Pharmacy. Tried and True Prescriptions for the Heart, Mind and Soul by William Seacott. And this is published by Particular Books. As you can see, it's in this beautiful little uh, red covered hardback here as well. I was actually sent this copy as part of a bunch of books I won for a National Poetry Day competition. I actually submitted one of my poems and got picked as the lucky winner. And this has got a blurb on the back from Stephen Fry. He said, here is balm for the soul fire for the belly, an arm around the lonely shoulder, a matchless compound of hug, tonic and kiss. And the blurb says, sometimes only a poem will do. These poetic prescriptions and wise words of advice from William Seacott's dispensary offer comfort, delight and inspiration for all. A space for reflection and that precious realisation, I'm not the only one who feels like this. So Seacott is interesting because his whole thing is the poetry pharmacist. So this started from events and that kind of thing. Uh, you could go along and you'd speak to him and he would kind of diagnose whatever happens to be troubling you and then provide you with a prescription for a poem that will help you to rectify that. And quite often through this he suggests memorising the poems as well. 
Um, he says in his introduction, you don't need to be a poet to find solace in poetry. In the words of Alan Bennett, the best moments in reading are when you come across something, a thought, a feeling, a way of looking at things which you had thought special and particular to you. Now here it is, set down by someone else, a person you have never met, someone even who is long dead, and it is as if a hand has come out and taken yours. And I think that's a great definition of what poetry should be. It comes with quite a lot of different interesting kind of sections here as well. So we've got the history of the poetry pharmacy, where he talks about how it all came across and started happening. So he says, uh, I must have listened over the last few years to nearly a thousand people's problems. This book is therefore a compilation of the prescriptions that work for 56 of the problems that really matter. I found that some of my prescriptions, such as the Hafez poem you'll read about on page 27, so inspire people that they seem to leave their chair a foot taller than when they sat down. Seeing the difference the right poem can make written on that many faces has given me confidence in poetry's power to change lives. He also has a section on how to read a poem as well. He says, when I'm asked for tips, I always give the same advice. Don't read the poem like you would a newspaper or a novel. Read it almost like a prayer. Say it aloud in your head as if you're speaking it to somebody else. Somebody interested who makes you want to perform it properly. Or, of course, read it truly out loud if you want to, and if you're not on the bus. Either way, it's the reading aloud that will allow you to properly hear it, that will make you understand the rhythms, cadences, and musicality of the words and phrases. And I'm a big believer in that. I think poetry is meant to be read aloud. Now, what's interesting is each one comes with a little condition, and then it says, also suitable for, and then you have a little bit about the poem, and then you have the poem itself. So it's literally 52 pages of these different conditions and the first one was actually for anxiety which i thought was quite interesting it was personally relevant to me because i suffer from anxiety disorder there's one actually that i wanted to memorize as well and this is for the condition of old age and this poem is all that is gold does not glitter by jrr tolkien all that is gold does not glitter not all those who wonder are lost the old that is strong does not wither deep roots are not reached by the frost from the ashes a fire shall be woken, a light from the shadows shall spring. Renewed shall be blade that was broken, the crownless again shall be king. I also wanted to read this one out, this one is The Way It Is by William Stafford and this is the prescription for purposelessness, apathy or nihilism. There's a thread you follow, it goes among things that change, but it doesn't change. People wonder about what you are pursuing. You have to explain about the thread, but it is hard for others to see. When you hold it, you can't get lost. Tragedies happen, people get hurt or die, and you suffer and get old. Nothing you do can stop times unfolding. You don't ever let go of the thread. There are also different overall sections. So you can see here, this is the motivation section. And because of this, you kind of fly through the book as well. It took me less than a day to read this and I was still kind of dipping in and out. What did make me laugh is that some of the conditions are oddly specific. So for example, the condition of inertia when alone. If you're gonna do 56 conditions, I feel as though there are, I don't know, more obvious ones than that to pick, I guess. But I guess they must have been struggling after a while. In fact, as a reader, I did find I started to get bored of this layout of the condition and then the, you know, the blurb on it and then the poem. I kind of just wanted to read the poems. Although I get that the, the book kind of revolves around that whole gimmick and to some extent much of uh, Seacart's career does as well so you know I don't mean to knock it or anything like that I think it's one of the it's one of those books that's not really d designed to be read from cover to cover but rather to be dipped in and out of more like a reference book one thing I would also say is that you know the layout's great most of the time and then you get to a poem like this one where it finishes uh, on the next page so you have this blank page here and it just bothered me because that blank page isn't there on the rest of the pages. So it was just a bit incongruous. You have all your classic poems in here like If by Rudyard Kipling and, you know, various others. But you also have some uh, more modern poetry as well. So you get a nice mix. Another odd condition here. This is for the condition of romantic boredom. And this is Atlas by UA Fanthorpe. There is a kind of love called maintenance, which stores the WD-40 and knows when to use it, which checks the insurance and doesn't forget the milkman, which remembers to plant bulbs, which answers letters, which knows the way the money goes, which deals with dentists and road fund tax and meeting trains and postcards to the lonely, which upholds the permanently rickety elaborate structures of living, which is Atlas, 
and maintenance is the sensible side of love, which knows what time and weather are doing to my brickwork, insulates my faulty wiring, laughs at my dry rotten jokes, remembers my need for gloss and grouting, which keeps my suspect edifice upright in air, as Atlas did the sky. All in all then, I really enjoyed this book. I think it was probably just about the right length. Aesthetically, it was beautiful, although, again, there were the odd kind of weird quirks with the layout and whatnot. And I'm glad I read this one. I did like it. And I think if you want what's effectively just a kind of a quirky take on a poetry anthology that spans all of the decades, pretty much, I, I think you could do a lot worse than this. So, uh, yeah, for that reason, I'm going to give it a four out of five. So anyway, that's it for this review. Do let me know in the comments what you think and whether you'll be checking this out. Also let me know whether you'd like to see more poetry book reviews because I film a lot but don't necessarily get around to posting them. And uh, in the meantime, please do hit subscribe, hit a like, etc, etc. And I'll see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye.